Hello, and welcome to Ticket to Life. This is Henry, and thank you so much for allowing me to take a little bit of your precious day and be a part of it. So summer is coming to an end. Now, a lot of parents may be thrilled about that. I'm not too sure about the educators. But um, a lot of uh, teachers have already headed back to school and students. It matters what part of the country you're in. Uh, in Texas, I know that they will be starting really soon, or they already have, honestly, by the time you get this recording. Um, but the teachers are so excited to have kids, to have these wonderful kids and be able to form their brains, their minds, and teach them, which is amazing because, you know, it's. Uh, I think a lot of people don't realize how hard it is to have a room full of kids. And I know a lot of kids are really excited about going back to school and kids who are going to be seniors this year. They're excited as last year and then they go off to college. But um, like I said, a lot of kids are excited or they're dreading it. And either way, I am wishing all the educators a wonderful, wonderful school year. And to all the parents, please, 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 please be patient with your students, teachers, and all the admins in the building because don't forget, they're not the only child in the school or in the classroom. And I hope, I hope so much that all of your kiddos have a fantastic year. And the reason I said some kids are excited and some are dreaded, dreading going back is because today I'm, I'm going to be talking about a, a pretty heavy topic that exists. Um, and it's, I'm, uh, we're going to be talking about bullying. We have uh, all met someone like this. And we have all been bullied at one time or another. And you may not think that you have. But if you think back, someone somewhere has been really rude or nasty. But honestly... They were probably a bully. But before we start, I do want to share something new that I have heard about. And no, this is not a commercial. That's kind of what that sounded like for a little bit, didn't it? <laughs> a very, very close friend of mine told me that she started mouth taping. Now, wait, let me give you here's my disclaimer I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist, and definitely I am not a somnologist. But a somnologist, I'm sure you're wondering what the heck is that. It is the study of, and some of you probably already know this, but I did not know the name, and it is somnology. And it is the study and treatment of sleep disorders. And so they monitor what happens in your brain and your body while you're asleep. Interesting, although I'm not sure I want anyone to know what's going on in my head while I'm sleeping. But fortunately, I don't have problems sleeping. Uh, but better knock on wood. Uh, well, anyway, my good friend was waking up with a dry mouth every morning. And she, just, oh, she said it was awful. Uh, and she mentioned it to her doctor. And her doctor says, well, you're probably sleeping with your mouth open at night. So try not to do that he says. <laughs> hmm, I'm pretty sure that I don't want to have chocolate and I just can't stop. So it's not that easy to stop certain things, especially if you're sleeping with your mouth open. So I, cause you're asleep, you don't know what's going on in, you know, your face, your arms. You could be one of those people that are just moving everywhere. But I, I don't, I don't think that that's that easy to, it's easier to be said, don't do this, but, uh, to, um, Anyway, so she started, she was wondering, well, you know, there's got to be a way. I don't know if I sleep with my mouth open or not. And she's single, so, you know, I guess she could record herself. I don't think she wants to do that. But so like any normal human being, my friend, oh, my gosh, let me give her a name. Uh, names have been changed to protect the innocent. Uh, Melanie. Melanie turned uh, to none other than, ta-da, Dr. Google. And learned about taping your mouth shut, not with duct tape or regular tape, but with strips that are made just for sleep. Now, that's this is what they're for. I'd never heard of it, and it was very interesting once I started looking it up because I, I was a little concerned. But so I'm telling everyone, please, 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 please 
don't try to do this with any kind of tape. Just importantly, the other thing is please talk to your doctor before you attempt this. Again, talk to your doctor before you attempt this. Now, if you're like me and I have a little mustache now that <laughs> those good old hormonal upper. No, I don't have a mustache. It's, it's like little hairs, extra hairs. I'm sure you all want to know that too. But anyway, I'm thinking this might be really good for me to sleep with because I think it would be beneficial because it probably would yank all those upper lip hairs out every morning. No, I'm not going to do that. And no, don't enlarge the picture on on the I, on the podcast to see it. No, I don't have any because I make sure that I don't have any. But anyway, I think it's a good thing uh, with these tape, with the tape, because it actually has a little slit in it. She sent a picture and it has a little slit where your mouth would open. So you can still help yourself with this habit. Um, you can breathe and, you know, you're not literally just breathing through your nose or whatever at night. Uh because uh, I think it's amazing that, that, that she was telling me that it's a habit. Uh, apparently, Melanie says she read up on it before. Of course, she went through with with it. And um, so, the, again, it's a habit like smoking, eating chocolate, biting your nails, except you're asleep. And I was kind of scared of her doing this. So I made sure to tell her ahead of time that I loved her and checked on her the next day to make sure she was okay and by the grace of god she was well and she slept she said she slept really great so we all know that we need to sleep to function and did you know that sleep deficiencies can also cause a child or even an adult to be a bully or being or being bullied why because sleep is so important for all ages and it factors into our self-esteem because if you're tired, you're not going to want to be around anyone. I know I'm not. Uh, some people never even uh, thought about the connection of sleep and their behavior, but it is. It is. I mean, I can. I when I read up on it, I thought, well, wow, that's amazing. But it is true because I was. I yes, I doc. I googled. I didn't doctor Google, but I was wondering about uh, lack of sleep. And no, she's not a grumpy person because she sleeps well, even with her mouth open. But she, that hit made me think. I wonder if people that are grumpy or bully or whatever is lack of sleep. So I, because that got me wondering, because I knew I was going to do this podcast on bullying because of the school year. But anyway, but poor sleep habits can actually cause aggressive disposition in someone. Not only grumpy, but mean, hot tempered, or even a bully. And um, I think that when people think of the word bully, sometimes we think of a big and loud manipulative kid who, who blames everything on, on the victims, aggressive. And guess what? Not all bullies are kids. Adults are bullies too. Have you met one? I have. Um, have they always been this way? Who knows? Perhaps. Not always. But for some, they may feel that now that they're adults, they can be mean and they can be bullied because they know that there are still adults that are meek and mild and just quiet. And knowing that this quiet person is more than likely not going to argue or express their opinions in any way. There are so many types of bullies, too, now. <laughs> not just kids waiting for your, you around the corner to take your lunch money. There is physical bullying, such as uh, kicking and hitting and stealing, shoving, spitting. And yes, this is adults too, not just kids. I mean, you see it on TV. And I always wonder where kids pick up these habits that carry on into their adulthood. Not all of them. Some of them tweak their lives. And you realize later on, they were not very nice kids. <laughs> Um, there's verbal bullying and social media bullying, racial bullying, sexual bullying, and even disability bullying, which that's crazy to me. Um, now 
the thing to remember or to think about is why are these kids or adults bullies? Many of these bullies have been bullied in the past, even in their homes, by their parents, grandparents, cousins, neighbors. And definitely this can break a child and it can make them be a bully later on with their classmates because they're picking this up at home or being bullied by a spouse. Yes, you can be bullied by your spouse, your husband or wife. And yes, some women are bullies in a marriage. And yes, it could be a verbal abuse. And they may not hurt you physically. Now, wounds will heal, but words can stay with some people. They will stay with us, unfortunately. And some may start believing some of these hurtful words are true. And it's easy for some to say, well, stand up for yourself. But it isn't easy for those who literally don't know how. And you're like, how do you not know how? You may not have been bullied as a child, but you could be bullied as an adult. Now, what I have found is you can protect yourself emotionally, access your choices, set boundaries, and get help. Whatever you do, if you decide to have to try an adult conversation with a bully and confront them with their actions, be, be ready for them <laughs> because you don't know. I didn't know. I, you're going to hear, I didn't know I offended you. Or I, or I didn't know I, I hurt you or hurt your feelings. Or I was just kidding. Or you take things too seriously. And of course, they could just blow up in your face. So make sure you are in a public place or around some people and do it, you know, quietly or whatever. If you decide to do this out, because you don't know, they just may freak out. And that's just my opinion, what I'm telling you, if you decide to do that. Now, I have confronted someone once that she said something hurtful. And when I did, she stood there just dumbfounded. And, and I don't think she realized. I, I really don't. I don't really think she realized what she had said until I told her and she just got quiet. I mean, her words and her attitude towards me and other people, and she didn't apologize. She just got quiet at the end of what I had to say. Honestly, I do not have time for bullying and I am careful who I am around. And if someone does say something to me or someone else kiddingly, some people take, take it and just, but you know it's hurting their feelings. I take things to heart, maybe sometimes too much. And sometimes I will defend you. Sometimes I do, and I literally, literally may get bothered if someone says something to me. But then I know when to move on. And now that's just who I am because we're all different. And some people just take bullying all their life, unfortunately, because they don't know how to get out of that situation or get away. You know, that's the only person who really cares for me. Well, and it's okay if they're verbally abusive to me. No, it's not. Now, for kids, it's totally, it's a totally different ball game. It really is. A bully can threaten them. And they say if they say anything, they'll threaten them with saying, if you say anything, um, I'm going to, the way I'm, I'm treating you or, or what I've done to you, then I'm going to hurt your family, your friends, or, or some, I make up some bogus story about, about the child. And, and, and kids are mean now. I mean, you've seen it. Some kids, not all kids. So don't get upset with me, but uh, kids are mean. But now with all the technology around, oh my gosh, 20% of cyber bullying are likely to attempt suicide. They are likely to attempt suicide. And there are minors. That's crazy. Bully victims, and yes, they are victims, are between two to nine times more likely to consider suicide than a non-victim. According to the studies by Yale University. <laughs> so please don't say these are just signs of growing up and, and brush them off. 
Be aware that something could be happening and you didn't acknowledge the change in your child. Put your phone down, parents. You know who I'm talking about because I've seen it many a time. Put your stinking phone down and get to know your kids. If you want them to respect you, you must respect them. And you know how much you care for them. And you have to let them know how much you care for them. Don't take it for granted that they know. Kids still want to hear, I love you. I care for you. I mean, adults want to hear it. So why wouldn't a child? Why wouldn't a teenager? And they may go, oh, mom, or oh, dad, stop. It doesn't matter. Deep inside, they love to hear, I love you. If they loved it as babies and toddlers and, and kids in elementary, why would you want to stop saying that as they grow up? Never, ever stop saying I love you to your kids. And kids never stop saying that to your parents or grandparents. And Grandparents Day is September 8th. Just throwing that in there. But um, So parents, try to put your phone down. Take I don't care if it's 15 minutes. It would be great if it could be an hour of time just to spend with your kids. And, if, and 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 get and and notice, notice some signs are sleeplessness, headaches, stomach aches, unexplained unexplained bruises. There's racist bullying, and I, I don't get that at all. Still, I don't care what color is your skin, I don't care where you come from. There's no need for that. I don't care who you get mad because somebody else did that to your friend or somebody else in in your your ethnicity. Again, we all have choices and we know right from wrong. There's no one who says, oh, that's the right thing to do when they know it's wrong. And again, we have good minds and we know to make good choices over bad. Well, anyway, back to... Uh, signs. Uh, they may appear sad. They may stop eating, not want their favorite snacks. They start having nightmares or start telling you that they hate school when they've always loved school. And definitely question those unexplained bruises. So the next step is not to handle it yourself. As much as you'd like to handle it and go confront the kid or confront the parents, don't do that. And document everything your kid tells you. I know that's a lot, but you can verbally hold your phone and record it. Uh, uh, so document it. I'm all about documenting things. You want to confront, uh, you know, meet with the uh, principal or or um, any type of administrator, teacher, whatever, Make sure someone else is there with you for support, but also it's like going to the doctor. What you don't hear, they might hear and be able to explain it to you. Because when you're a parent and you're upset about your kids being bullied or, or being mistreated or something happened in the classroom, there's always two sides. Always remember that. But anyway, the next step is not to handle it yourself as much as you'd like to, but Again, you know, we we get upset. The mama and papa bear come out in this when, when it's our kids, or it should, and someone's hurt them. Uh, contact the school teacher or school counselor or school principal and don't say, oh, well, they don't care. You don't know if they care if you don't pick up the phone or send an email. There's your documentation. If you have the school... Uh, have to you, you have to go to the super school superintendent. And next, if you're not seeing anything happening to help your child, go to the state department of education. Don't stop. Your kids are everything. Now, I'm going to put in the descriptions. I don't know if you're listening to this on the radio or. Uh, hopefully you're on a podcast platform so you can see it. If not, if you're listening to this to the radio in Atlanta uh, and Georgia and Dallas area, uh, Dallas, Georgia, uh, go to the podcast and you'll be able to see. I'm going to put a link and it's called stopbullying.gov. Um, 
and it's for kids. There's some there's some hints in there. It tells you uh, what kids can do. There are little videos, what teens can do, what adults can do. There are so many things you can do. Uh, I'm also going to put in our description or my description in the page, and it is the Suicide Prevention Lifeline, which is 988. If you need to text, it's 88788. Now, for the hard of hearing or the deaf, there is also, you you dial 711, and yes, you'll see this in the description, so this is really good if you are having to read the transcript of the podcast, 711, then you will press 988. There's also Veterans Crisis Hotline, and that is 988, then you press 1. Um and also in Espanol, in Espanol, el número es 988 y presione el número 2. So if you do know anyone who does speak Spanish, they can call uh, 988, press 2, and they will get someone who speaks to them in Spanish to help them out. Uh, these are very important numbers to always have, always. I also will include the domestic uh hotline number because like I said these are ex uh, these are numbers that honestly you should keep in your phone if not for you but for someone else but back to your kids it is so important so important to have that conversation with them and don't don't plant the seed of well it's a new school year new kids uh, there might be some bullies because that could really freak them out and you don't want that but as long as you have that open relationship and open uh, conversation with your kids, they'll come to you. Of course, that I'm not a therapist, a child therapist or anything, but it is true. Because I don't think school is like it used to be. <laughs> of course, I went, I was in high school in the 70s, and I definitely know it's nothing compared to what my kids went to and and what kids go to now. Some of the schools here in Texas are having the kids finally, of course, turn in their phones and put them in this little bag and they get them at the end of the day. So I know that a lot of parents will not agree with that, but maybe it will help. You know, I, th I think a lot of parents say, what if they need an emergency? Okay, back in the day, especially when you younger adults were in school, you didn't have your cell phone to call your mom and dad. You know, they handled it. If there was an emergency, the teacher will call. The, the office, someone will call. And again, it is so much easier for me to say, I'm not there, but I know my granddaughters will be going to school before long. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much things have changed from when I was in school. So again, um, I think it's very important that we talk to our kids. And if you have a friend, an adult friend, who you know is being bullied at the workplace or by friends, so-called friends, or even at home, have a get rid of some of these phone numbers see which one's going to fit and help them out help is always there for us some people are just scared to ask for it I can handle it I'll be fine but sometimes we can't handle these hard things that happen to us in life we can't handle the mean person that has done something or said something now a lot of people take things and take them literally now you should know the difference between a person who is really kidding just because that's just who they are or someone who hides their bullying behind kidding. I, I have a friend who her uh, husband is always putting her down in front of people. Always, always, always. And someone mentioned it to her that they noticed this, but she says it's okay, you know. She's gotten used to it. No one should be lit, be belittled by a loved one. Never. And bullying can lead to some really bad things. And we're talking like heinous crimes. 
So it's important, again, to talk to your kids. And if you notice anything I have said in this, and you're like, hey, you know, Matilda down the hall, she's a bully. I just realized here in this podcast. <laughs> just don't tell Matilda who you heard it from. Just kidding. I don't care who knows. You know, if I can help someone to help themselves, do it. Now, I'm about to tell you something, and it's going to be uh, hard for some to understand because they are non-believers. But in the Bible, now this is, you may quote me, but of course there's all different types of Bibles. Now, in the Bible, in, in Mark 12, 31, it says, love our neighbor as ourselves. Now, we've all heard this. That means love everybody. Just love, love, love. And in Luke 6, 31, it says, treat others the way we would like to be treated. Now, here's the really hard part. And we, as Christians, are asked or supposed to pray for those bullies or those people who are mean or those people who are horrible people and we're supposed to pray for them pray for them to change their ways or may they find God and find peace now that can be really hard too have I done it yes I have because some people just are lost and that's all they know is how to be a bully they don't know anything else that's just how they were raised or that's how they've gotten through life is by being a bully. So I know that's really something hard to swallow is to say, be sure to pray for them. But if not, pray for yourself. I'll be praying for you and I will be praying for those who are bullied. And may they find some peace by seeking help. Don't ever be ashamed to ask for help for anything in life. That's why people are around. People want to help you. People love to help others. So I guess this is the end of the podcast. I hope I'm able to help some of you. And until next week, I can't wait to see you then. Please go find your blessings because you are one of my blessings. Thank you for listening.